What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik, aka Franchise Play, here with another episode of Ask FP. Don't forget to go ahead and leave me a like, and we're going to start this off with the question of the week, and it comes from Benjamin. He says, I'm trying to get more into boxing, so current top five most exciting guys to watch. Now, let me remind you, Benjamin and everybody else, he asked for the most exciting guys to watch, not necessarily the five best fighters, because that is a little different. Although, some of the guys I'm going to mention are definitely among the pound-for-pound pound best in the world. I would say you got to watch Gennady Golovkin. Like him or loathe him, he is an exciting fighter, and you are almost assured of seeing a knockout when you see him fight. Undefeated, and he is he hasn't really fought anybody yet, just to be totally honest, but he is a monster. Sergey Kovalev is another. He's a the lineal light heavyweight champion. He is another one that almost guarantees you of seeing a knockout. He is a machine. I think he's actually a better boxer than Golovkin. I would also say Canelo Alvarez. Absolutely. Uh, this guy takes the best fights, the toughest fights, and he comes looking to trade. Felix Verdejo is one that a lot of people may not know, but he is the current and next Puerto Rican superstar in the sport. He is blazing fast with electric power. Definitely need to see him. And another one, now people might have a, a problem with me saying this, but Deontay Wilder is exciting. Now he's he's not as refined as you might want, but he brings massive power and he is looking to finish his opponent every single time he fights. So those will be my five. Lubin Roftus Cheek says, can the Panthers perform at the same level next season or was this a one year thing? Football, anything can be the one year thing. We all know what happens traditionally to the Super Bowl loser, but I believe that barring major injuries to key people like Cam Newton, uh, Josh Norman, uh, Kwan Short, uh, Luke Keekley, uh, I think the Panthers are a team that you're going to have to be reckoned with for the next three to five years. As long as Cam is there and as long as Cam is playing at a high level, which I believe he will continue to do, I think the Carolina Panthers are set up to be a perennial Super Bowl contender for the aforementioned time span. Lubin has another question. He says, what major league team or teams do you see emerging from obscurity to challenge the big clubs next season? Sometimes there's 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 a team every, you know, sometimes there's a team that steps up from both the American League and the National League that kind of shocks people with how long they stay in a pennant race or maybe they go even further than that. The two teams that I would say this year uh, is Min the Minnesota Twins. They have a very young core, Byron Buxton, and he has some young pitchers. They kind of turned it on towards the end of last season and showed some, um, some, some promise, but they couldn't quite turn the corner. This could be the year that they really put a real scare into the rest of the American League, especially in the American League Central. As far as the National League, watch the Florida Marlins. With a healthy, healthy Jose Fernandez and assumingly a healthy Giancarlo Stanton, that and they also brought back, uh, they also brought back D, uh, you know, the second baseman D Gordon. So I think that they definitely have a, a, an exciting core. If they can get some other starting pitching to go with Fernandez, you got to watch them. Uh, Crash says, "Who is your top five stop? Top five scrambling quarterbacks ever? Number one for me would be Steve Young." I think Steve, in my, a lot of people think I'm crazy when I say this. Steve Young's the greatest quarterback ever lived, in my personal. Overall, everything considered, I would take Steve Young over everybody. That's just me. Number two would be uh, Randall Cunningham. Number three would be Mike Vick. Number four would be Steve McNair, even though I consider him just like Steve Young, much more than just a scrambling quarterback, but I would have to put him there. And number five, I would, I would have to go with Cam at this point. We'll see what happens moving forward. But for right now, I'd put him at five. Easton T says, the top five rappers of all time. Now, I'm an old school hip hop fan, so the people I'm going to name are probably not going to be, a, you know, the people that the young folk would name right now. You know, a lot of guys, I mean, I like Kendrick. Kendrick, well, I like, Kendrick is skilled to me. I'll put it like that. I'm going to say I like the majority of his music, but I do recognize he's skilled. J. Cole is absolutely skilled. So, but my top five would be, Number five would be Most Def. Most Def is phenomenal to me. Uh, number f uh, number four would be the Notorious Big. Number three would be Big Pun. 
Big Pun to me is the most probably the most underrated MC of all time. Number two would be Jay Z. Don't like all of everything that Jay Z does, but his success and his longevity is undeniable as well as his skill. Number one is Rakim. Some of y'all are like, who in the world is Rakim? But um, <laughs> Rakim, and from my personal taste, is the greatest MC of all time. Jared Young says. Are Ben Simmons' chances of being drafted first slipping? I don't think so. I think Ben Simmons has the type of talent that makes his draft stock impervious to a bad game. I think that he is so talented, so far and away talented, his ceiling is so high that he could struggle in the regular he can struggle now in the regular season and he maybe even Say for instance, if they if if they go if the LSU you know makes the tournament and they and they lose in the first round, I and he struggles. I even think his talent level would supersede that. It would even get him. To, he would still be the number one pick. That's just how 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 highly, highly touted he is and how how talented that he is. Simon Torve Sunland says the All Star break is approaching. What's the best three point contest, dunk contest, and All Star game you've ever seen? I had to write it down. For me, the 2001 slam dunk contest with Vince Carter is the best, and it's all about Vince. I don't even barely remember anybody else <laughs> well, what they did, but that's just how phenomenal Vince Carter was that year, and I thought that that was the best slam dunk contest. The best three-point shootout, 1988 in Chicago, Larry Bird in the shootout against Dale Ellis in the final, and he holds up the crooked, broken finger. Uh, on his game winning three as he knew it was going in before he even went in. That was just ridiculously dope. The best All-Star game though, 2003. 2003 All-Star game, an old Mike in an overtime game hit what looked like the game winning fadeaway in Sean Marion's face, but a dumb foul by Jermaine O'Neal later on on Kobe Bryant shooting the three. Now listen to the names I'm telling you they're in this All-Star game. Ends up forcing another overtime and the West dominates in the in the second overtime, and they win the game. But the people that were in this All Star game: Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, Vince Carter, Shaquille O'Neal, Allen Iverson, Tracy McGrady, Jason Kidd, Gary Payton. Oh my God! That All Star game, right? That All Star game was phenomenal. Easton T says, "Who will have the more successful career?" This is a weird pairing. Andrew Wiggins or Victor Oladipo? I think this is pretty easy. Andrew Wiggins, far and away, is going to have the better career. Victor Oladipo um, was relegated. I don't even want to so much say relegated, but he was sent to the bench to be a six-man, you know, here with Orlando. Under Scott Skiles, and Scott Skiles does some weird things sometimes. But I, I think overall, if you just even look at pure size, Andrew Wiggins, because he's a legit 6'7", six, 6'8", and has long arms, and he's the explosive athlete, just like Oladipo is. I think he has a much higher ceiling, so I think I think he will ultimately end up having a better career. Jovan Radovanovic says, "Will Blake Griffin be traded this season?" I definitely think there's a chance. I really, really do. Uh, I don't know. I have to check on how the rules go for trading an injured player. So we'll have to see. I, I have to look into that a little bit deeper. I just actually kind of thought about that, but. I guess maybe the question that you might want to, the caveat I might want to add is, will the Clippers decide this season that they're going to move on from Blake? Because circumstances with the injury may prevent them from actually moving him, but they may already make up their mind that they're going to move him at the first opportunity, which could mean he'd be moved in the offseason. But it would not shock me. I'm probably leaving more, leaning more towards he will not be back with the Clippers next season, then he will. Brian Hill says, is the argument that Will Chamberlain is the GOAT a valid one? It's absolutely valid. Um, it's an argument, so it's, I don't think it's an open and closed type of a situation. But if you got a guy that averaged 50.4 points a game in a season, if you got a guy for an entire, what was a 15-year career, led the league in a major statistical category every single season but one 
and then the only season he didn't lead the league in a, in a major statistical category was the 69-70 season when he only played 12 games. His level of dominance is almost unprecedented in any other team sport. So you absolutely can make the case that he is the GOAT. Now, I tend to still lean towards Michael Jordan, and that could that could really, just being totally honest with you, that could be based on a lot on the fact that I literally got to watch almost every single game in his career because I'm a Chicagoan. So it could be that, but you know, six championships don't lie, the moments and all the things that Mike did don't lie either. So, but yeah, it's definitely a valid point to if someone says that who can call him crazy. Jared Young says, which NBA 2K game do you think had the best soundtrack? For me, I believe it was NBA 2K13 that had the uh, is that the one that jay-z curated i if it that's the one that for me had the best soundtrack i i found myself not getting irritated with the songs quicker which after a while in my opinion you're gonna get irritated with every single soundtrack i mean i don't care what game and soundtrack you put together at some point you're gonna be like you know what i really don't like this <laughs> so um yeah i mean it, it's gonna happen but yeah for me that was probably the most tolerable one. Vince Delgado says, who would you want or like The Undertaker to face at WrestleMania, given all the current injuries? Um, nobody. <laughs> I want Undertaker to go and sit down. That's really what I want him to do. I want him to go and find a seat and just sit on it and don't do anything any other wrestling. And I, I, I mean, obviously, Undertaker's a legend and he's, ah, uh, whatever. But there's nothing else to do, man. You know, I mean, how many times are we going to watch the half hour long entrance and act like we're still chilled by it? It's It comes a time where it's just time to let it go. And I believe that we're about two years past that with The Undertaker. I really think the last match should have been Lesnar, if not the, the one that he lost. And if not that one, at the very most, the next year against Bray when you don't when you let him go out on a winning note. Outside of that, that should be done. Vince Delgado also says, what do you think is the reason for the Bulls' inability to close out games in the fourth quarter? What are they missing? This is a really good question, and I've actually been thinking about this even before you answered this. Ask me this, Vince. For me personally, I think it's fatigue, and I think it's an issue with trying to play Fred Hoiberg's up pace, up um, you know the 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 high pace offense, and totally honest, they don't have the roster to play that system. It you you got a you have a 36 year old big who is already lazy on defense in Pal Gasol, and you're asking him to play this up tempo game, and late in the game his his legs are shot. So nobody's running with him. Jimmy Butler is a slow down type of player unless he is in transition. So he, you know, I just don't think it matches. They don't have the shooters uh, at the positions of the people who, who control the ball the most. Butler and Rose don't shoot the ball well from deep. So if you look at the high paced offense, the up tempo offenses like the Golden States and the Houston's, those two teams, those teams have guys to shoot the ball a little bit better than Rose and Butler. So I just don't think it matches. And I think that that's the reason why late in the games, I think they're tired, and I think that's why the execution goes out of the door. Lubin Rofter's cheek again says, what effect do you think Cam's Super Bowl performance will have on his elite reputation? I don't think the performance is going to bother him as much as uh, people, you know, the situation with the way he carried himself in the, uh, you know, during the game, especially the second half, and at the post post game press conference, that's something he's going to have to deal with. Uh, I didn't think he acted properly for a leader. I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to hold it against him forever. You know, when I, when I was 26, I did stupid stuff too. Everybody, nobody is in the world is the finished product at 26 years old. People are, are not the finished product at 56 years old. So he didn't kill nobody. He just didn't lose well. So it is what it is. But I think that's the part of it that he'll have to live down more so than his actual in-game performance. The Broncos' defense is great. Okay, so 
I think you can blame that a little bit more on him not performing well. Jovan Radvanovic says, what is the solution for the hacker player strategy? In my opinion, the solution is make free throws. That's it. I mean, we can talk about it slowing the game down. We can talk about people not wanting to see it. We can talk about all that stuff, but not, the way that they'll stop fouling you if you start making shots. It's just that simple. You know, so I don't think that we, I don't think that the NBA should put a rule in place that protects players from being from the from the consequences of being less than skilled in a crucial aspect of the game. Free throw shooting is a crucial a crucial aspect of the game. So because people don't want to see somebody get fouled, we're going to protect people like DeAndre Jordan, and Andre Drummond, and I love both of those guys. But you got to make free throws. It's just that simple. Jovan Ravanovic also says, do you think that the NBA roster should be expanded? No, but what I do think is that they should shake it out a little bit to the point where the call-ups from the D-League are a little bit more seamless. That's what I think. So it should be like more like a minor league system like that functions like baseball. So that's it for the questions. But I do want to drop something for you guys today. I want you to subscribe to my Real Sports channel. I've had it for a while. I just haven't talked about it. But I am migrating all of my Real Sports content, like this show, Ask FP, which is very important. I'm migrating that over to my Real Sports channel. So Real Sports channel basically is going to be just that. It's going to have my content that is all Real Sports. So no gaming on that channel. So no, no series or anything like that are going away. They're just being put in what I believe are the proper places. So click the link there right there at the bottom and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm hurting for subscribers right now because I haven't been telling anybody about it. I got some inter older interviews up there, but you starting in March. I didn't mention that. This starts in March. You'll see Ask FP and recaps and that sort of thing on that new channel. Go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. God bless. Peace.